Yo, welcome back to my channel. And on this time, we're gonna do a little tutorial in Unreal Engine, because I got a request from one of my subscribers to do a tutorial, and I learned a way better way to do some doors. So in this one, we're gonna learn how to do a door system, or pretty much an interactable system, but I'm gonna show you how to do it with a door. So the first thing we need to do is get a blueprint interface. Now, this is gonna allow us to press one button and do multiple things like in most times in games you can press the E button and you open the door press the E button also to pick up an item press the E button to interact with anything let's make that interact button in our game so you want to first find a blueprint interface and we can call it interact interface okay Cool, now that we got that, double click into that interact interface and you're gonna see this new function. It's nothing we can really do here, but make that new function say interact. And pretty much, that's all we've gotta do here. You can close that down. The next thing that we have to do is we need to build a door. So, right click in your content browser, go to blueprint class, click on actor, and then what we're gonna do is call it door um, underscore blueprint or BP so for the door blueprint double click on that and we're gonna get this blank first thing we need to do is go over here to the left side and press add and we're gonna add a static mesh now this static mesh is gonna be the frame so call it frame and then come over here to the static mesh and look for door and you'll see that there's a frame that's the one we want so once you click that, you're going to see the frame pop up here. Now, in order to put the door in there, what we need to do is click this little um, snapper and snap it down to five, right? And we're going to add another static mesh, and that one's going to be the actual door. So in the static mesh for this, come over here and just type in door one more time, and you're going to get this door. And it should be lined up perfect. Um, all you have to do is slide it over just a bit. So make sure you slide it over so it's just right there, fitting perfectly into the door. All right, now that you got that, you save. And we've got our door here, but we're not finished with our door. We need a few more things. We need to add, on this side, we need to add a box collision. So press add and pre type in box collision and on this side this box collision is going to be our enter so we can call it enter and we need to add one more box collision and this one's going to be called our exit and we'll put it on the other side of the door and these are cool because we'll need these in a second Now, what this door, the enter and exit, well, that's cool. Uh, but what we need to do is we need to move these enter and exit to the default scene. So just drag it up to the default scene and attach. Same with the exit. And the reason why you want this to happen is because when the door swings open, you do not want these to be moving around. You want them to pretty much stay still. So compile and save. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to go into our door and we need to add a variable. So let's add a variable called unlock. So right here, variable plus unlock. I'm gonna put unlocked question mark and compile and save. For that one, because we're gonna have multiple doors in our game, put the unlocked variable, click the eyeball. That way, what you can do is when you're in the game and you put your doors in place, you can click on the door and then you'll be able to click on one checkbox to unlock it and lock it. So that's when you're building your world. It makes it a little easier. But now that you have that door, um, go up to the class settings here and come down here where it says implemented interfaces and we're going to have to add one. And we're going to add the interface that you just made. There you go, compile and save. 
We're not finished because we have to come and write some code for the door. But before we do that, let's go into our player blueprint. So third person bloop, third person character blueprint, or if you're using a first person, do the first person. But don't worry about all this code that I have here. That's to do other stuff that we're not talking about right now. But here, what we do need to do is we need to set up that interact interface. The first thing that we need to do in order to set up that interact interface is we need to choose a button that we're going to use for our interact button. So in this case, I'm going to choose my triangle button on my controller or the E button on my keyboard. In order to set that up, go to your third person folder, go to inputs, go to actions, and we're going to make a new action here. So right click, click on input, then input actions. Then we're going to call this one um, interact. Cool. Now in your controllers right here, we have to set it up. So let me make sure I don't have this tied to another button. Okay. So press plus in your mappings. Find interact right here. And then just press this button in whatever key you want to use. For me, I'm going to use E. And we'll save it like that. All right, now that you've got the button set up for interacting, we can close that down, go back to your third person character, and we'll set up some code for that interact button. So right clicked and type in interact, and you're gonna get the button, uh, the, uh, the action event, that's what you want. So once you have that, we need to click on started, and um, well actually before that, before that, what we want to do is like, let's think about this. So when you press the interact button, you want to see if you're close to something that has the interact interface. So let's say get overlapping actors. There you go. That's the first thing we're going to need. Second thing that we're going to need is we're going to have to get a for each loop with a break. So what this is going to do, oops, I can spell. All right, so what this is going to do is going to cycle through all of the actors that implement, um, we'll just period all the actors, just period. It's going to cycle through all the actors. And then we're going to set up which actors we want to cycle through. So first, in overlapping actors, come down here to your class filter and just put in actor. So it cycles through every actor. Once it finds the actor that it's looking for, we're going to set up the code for the break because the break just means it stops looking through all of these actors. So the next thing that we need is we need to say, does this actor implement the interface? And which interface do we want? The one that we just made? There we go. And notice that this is a return with a red. So that means it's like asking a question. It, does it implement the interface? Yes or no. So get a branch and hook that up, true or false and then hook that up to the loop body and if it does implement the interface then what we want to do is we want to call interact so true interact oops interact and you want the one that has the message right here it says interact message that's what you want bah. all right so once it does interact you want it to tell the for each loop to stop looking so we'll need to drag this all the way to the break here. You can double click on that line to give you these little things to make it more neater. Cool. That should be your interact code all the way set up. So now, well, this target right here, let's cook this target up to the array element and then compile and save. And so what's going to happen is when you press that interact button, it's going to search through all the actors and see if you're overlapping any of the actors that in implement the interface. And if you are, then it's going to run the interact code. Now the interact code we have not set up because that's going to exist inside of each actor that implements the interface. So therefore we can make each actor that does implement that interface, we can make it unique and do different things. So this is where the fun part gets in. All right, so what we need to do next is go back to our door blueprint and let's set up the interact inter, uh, the interact code here. So compile and save. Uh, and for our door, 
we've got the exit sign, we've got the enter sign, we've got the door, we've got the frame. These are all the variables we can play with and we've got unlocked here. So let's go ahead and play with some of these variables. Right click and say interact. You want to add the event called interact right there. Boom. So it should have this little blue thing right in the top right and that's how you know you got the right one. What it means is that this interact is talking about the interface interact and that's why this little picture is there because it's referring to the interface so when that interface event interact gets called in the door we want the door to do something unique um, first thing we need to do is check and see if that door is unlocked because what we want the door to do is open so get your variable unlocked and get it and then put a branch here and hook it up to the event interact and just like that. So if the door is unlocked, then we'll do something. If the door is not unlocked, then we'll do something else. All right. But let's go ahead and set up what we want to do. So the first thing we want to do is we want to open the door. So in order to do that, let's make a custom event and just right click and press custom event. And we'll say open door. All right. And so for this one, all we have to do is drag off of here and say generate generate overlap events oops well in, in order to get the overlap events you can get it two ways you can press context sensitive off or you can do this so what we want to happen is when you go into this box we want it to be able to you want to press e in this box so you can open that door but when you run into this box, we don't want this one to be live. So we're about to we're about to make that work right now. So we're gonna make this box dead and this box alive, basically. So this one's called enter and that one's called exit. So what we need to do is go back to our event graph and on the exit one, this is the one that we wanna turn off when we're in the entering one. So get uh, generate overlap events. And there you go set and we want to set it to no overlap events because you want the exit um, cube right here you don't want this to be live when you open the door so we're going to set that to off and then the next thing we need to do is get this door here so your door which is right here make sure that it's movable over here in the transform which ours is movable and that's a good thing come back to your event graph drag that door in and then we're going to say uh, get relative location cool and then we're also going to say move component too now the component that you want to move is going to be the door component you want to move it to the location that it's already in but you hook that up right there but you want to move it like 90 degrees in the Z rotation here so what we're gonna do is look at the viewport here Just click on your door and let's rotate it to where you want it to be open and we'll see what that number is so in our case this number it looks like it says negative 90 so for our open let's say negative 90 in the Z negative 90 Bow cool now what we need to do now is make a closed door function so let's also make a close function so it'll be a custom event and we'll call it closed door now for the closed door all you want it to happen is that uh, pretty much the same thing to happen except you want a delay here so what we're going to do is say, uh, we'll leave this part for the last part. So we're going to get this door and all of this right here. So copy and paste. And before that happens, let's wait. So the door is going to close automatically. We don't want to have to press a, a button for the door to close. How long do you want the door to wait open? This is what this delay is going to be for. So add a delay. And... I'm gonna hold the door open before, for like four seconds, and then I'm gonna let it close itself. 
So move component to everything looks right here except this Z needs to be zero. Okay, so it, it'll wait four seconds when the closed door function is called and then it's gonna close the door. Cool. Now we're not finished with this, but what we can do is let's make sure this all works by calling these functions up here on the interact. So if the door is unlocked, then we'll say open door. And immediately after that, we'll do the close door because that means it's gonna wait four seconds and then close the door. So compile and save that. For your third person character, before we test this out, Go to the class settings here for the third person character and in interfaces, I would say add um, interact interface, compile and save. Now in your world, go ahead and drag out that door. So wherever you made that door, drag that door out. And remember which side is your enter and your exit because we're going to need that. Okay, so I've got my door out there, and on this side is my enter, and on the other side is my exit. So if I come up here, the door should not open right now, although you can walk through it. We'll fix that. But press E next to the door, and it should open. Okay. In order to fix that, what we need to do is click in your door, and go down. We'll just click on the whole door BP and actually click on your door um, static mesh and right here where it says generate overlap events simulate hit events make sure generate overlap events is on all right so the reason why the door didn't open is because the door is not um, unlocked if you click on this door here and you go over here to the detail panels remember that button that we set up locked and unlocked well, watch this. So let's set this door up and then let's drag in another door right beside it. And this door can be facing the same direction. But this time we're going to set this left one to unlocked. And we'll press save and let's play that. So remember this, this door is locked. So when we walk up and press E, nothing's going to happen here. We can make like a locked sign pop up, but you walk up to this one you press E, the door opens automatically. Four seconds, it closes. That's beautiful. So let's go ahead and make it like have text when you walk up to the door and say, you press E here and it doesn't open because it's locked. Let's make it say locked. And when this one does open, we need to say um, E to open the door or something like that when they walk into this cube. So let's set that up. All right. So, in order to set up that that part of the door, then let's do this. Go back into your door blueprint. All right, cool. Now look for your open door. So event interact, when it's unlocked, true, it's gonna open the door and then it's gonna close the door. We need to set up when they enter into this enter thing. So click on your enter, come down here to on component begin overlap and the com other actor drag off and say third person character when they walk into this uh, we need to see if the door is unlocked or locked not necessarily like this is where it's like on you you could just say e to open door right so let's just do that instead so in order to make that happen we got to create that actual text to do that, come in your content browser, right click, and click on user interface widget blueprint. We want a user widget, and we'll call this um, E to open. Cool. Double click on that. We'll go into that, find a canvas panel over here on the left, drag your canvas panel right into here. And the next thing that we need is some text. So drag some text right here as well. Now, you can put this text wherever you would like, but for me, I'm going to put it down in, I think, the bottom here. 
or you could put it in the top that kind of would make more sense for a video game right so put it in the top wherever you want to put it regardless just make it say press E to open cool right now that it says that what we can call is this widget to come up when we need it so back in your door when the player walks in the enter box we want to create a widget the widget that we want to create is called e to open or whatever you just named yours and then you want to add it to the viewport and because you don't want this to stay up there forever, you can either do one of two things. When they exit this, take it off the screen or give it a delay and take it off the screen. For me, I'm going to do when they exit that box, take it off the screen. So click on the enter, go on on component end overlap, do the same thing with the third person character. So hook that third person character up to other actor. And then what you want to do is... Uh, you want to get this widget so get all widgets of class and the one that we're looking for is called e to open and then you simply want to remove it from the parent remove from parent there you go and make sure your blue is hooked up to the blue here and that should be good basically now when we walk into the enter box it's going to say E to open. So you press save, save, compile. Let's test that out and make sure that works. Save here and play. So there's my two doors. Oops, sorry. What do we just see? A random cat fact? Okay. You walk into the box and it says press E to open. Press E to open. You press E to open this one and it doesn't do anything. Press E to open this one and it does. So on this one, what we need to do is say locked. So in your content browser for the E to open, let's duplicate that widget blueprint. All right. And we'll call this one locked. Go into your locked blueprint and just simply change this text up here to say locked. L C K E D. For me, I'm going to make mine red because that's what happens when you're locked out of a place. And also, you can change the justification to center so it pops up in the middle. Perfect. Now we need to tell that lock when to come. So go back to your door, and this is when the lock is going to happen. So if unlocked is true, then open the door. If unlocked is false, then we need to create... A widget first thing that we'll do though is this we'll say get all widgets a class because and the one that you want to get is going to be the e to open and we're going to remove that off the screen first so remove from parent make sure the blue is hooked up and then after that we need to create another one so create a widget and we'll call this one locked now that this one is locked, we need to add it to the viewport. Cool. So basically, in this door, what's going to happen is that if it is unlocked, then it's going to open. If it is locked, it's going to tell us that it's locked. So let's make sure that works out as well. So let me see if I get this play from here. Here we go. All right, so walk up to it, press E to open, E to open. So for this one, it should just open beautiful for this one we'll press E and it says locked and last thing that we need to do is take that locked off the screen so go back into your locked here and there's two ways we could do this we can animate this and take it off the screen or in your door blueprint you just put a delay so we'll say delay for about two seconds this is the easier way, by the way. Delay for about two seconds and then remove it from the screen. So again, get all widgets a class. And we're going to find the locked. Oops. 
cool and then we'll remove that from the parent if you don't find remove from parent that means you try to search for it from the blue search for it from the white and then connect the blue to the blue cool that's beautiful let's check that out and make sure that works too and then i think that you know that's, that's a pretty good interactable system e to open bow locked no e to open hey it opens and then it's going to close that's really cool so uh i don't want to leave you guys hanging because we didn't set up the open code for this back part over here but basically it is the exact same thing except just like the opposite so let's let's set it up real quick while we're here so we've got the open door we've got the closed door so what we can do is make this door a little bit better by adding a way that you can do the same thing on the other side so for me i'm going to get rid of this actual exit one because we don't need that but before i do that we have exit written into this code so let's just change that to the enter one right here and anytime you see exit just change it to enter and that should be good um, compile and then let's get rid of the exit so go to your viewport and delete this exit one and for your enter we're gonna move it so that it overlaps the door and you can access it from both sides that way it'll ask you or it'll tell, it'll tell you E to open door when you're on both sides so let's go ahead and test it out and make sure that works E to open door, E that one's locked, E to open door, E that one opens. We turned off, now it's closed, and we need to make it say E to open door again from this side. So for some reason that's not firing off, so let's figure out what's going on there. Okay. Generate overlap events. So when it closes the door, we need to set that back to true that's the problem there so copy and paste that down here and make sure you hook it up to your enter and we'll set set it to true so that way when the door is open the other side won't be active but as soon as the door closes the other side is active and that's exactly what we want there and you can add in a lock to your door so maybe this door since it's locked right maybe we need to get a key to open it so we can do that next, but this one press E to open, come on the other side here, it's going to close, walk up to it, press E to open. Cool. And there you go. Um, <clears throat> also what you could do is you can get more fancy with it and you can make the door open um, different directions here. And that's what, you know, we could get into that. That's a little bit complex, but that's that's something you could do with these doors. Uh, but like I said, what if you needed a key to unlock this door? So let's make a key real quick. So come down here um, in your content browser, find a blank space, right click, and we're going to make a new actor. For me, I'll put it in this folder, assets. And this is going to be my key folder. And real quick, right click blueprint actor. And this is going to be our key. Double click on your key, add a static mesh. And this is going to be the actual key. For here, we'll just put like a little, I don't know, a cone. Let's use a cone. Let's make it small. There. And then last thing you want to add is a sphere collision. So add a sphere collision. Bop. And make this one circle around the cone. So the player can pick up the key. So compile, save. Now go to the blueprint for the key. On that sphere collision, come in the details on the right hand side and say on overlap. And then the other actor we want is the third person character. And when they overlap that sphere, then we want to um, delete the key so destroy actor but before that we need to set a variable here we don't have one to set so let's go to our third person character I know we're going 
kind of fast this time, but hopefully you're following along. And we need to actually set up a new variable here. So let's say has key. Cool. And it has, we're going to set it to false right here. So that's good. But when they overlap the sphere, we need to set that to true. So has key set. This is back in our key blueprint here now. We're going to set that to true. <clears throat> and now the key is all set up. Perfect. Um, back in your door, though, let's go back to the door. We need to give the door the key. So it's going to only open if you have the key. So if it's unlocked, true. Um, if it's false, then we need to see if you have the key. So put a branch there. And we're going to cast it a third person character before that. So drag it back and say third person character and cast to it. And for the object, get player character. <clears throat> and from here, we're going to say, drag off of here and say has key. And get it and plug it right into this branch. If has key is true, then we want the door to open. But if it's false, we want it to say that it's locked. So that's what I did. So for my branch, I put false to everything that we had before. For true, I can just put it up to this. So let's check that out on our locked door. Remember, you can set the door from locked to unlock just by clicking on this button here in the details. That's what we set up. So on our locked door, oh, we didn't put the key out there, did we? Put the key somewhere in your level so you can pick it up. So let's put that somewhere out here. Boom. Boom. All right. So let's go test out these doors. Press E to open the door. All right. Wow. All right. Cool. And then there you go. Perfect. Press E to open the door. Um, locked. Oh, no. Well, let's go get this key. Now I picked up the key because it disappeared. And then we'll go and open the door now. And it opens. So that's how you do a door system that's pretty dope. Uh, like I said, you can get super complex with it. You can make your doors open in different directions. You can make these doors have locks. You can make them have key codes, which I've done a video about putting key codes on these doors. But this is just a way better door system. Um, and before I leave the video, I told you how I would make this door so you can't walk through it. So real quick, go to your door blueprint. Uh... And click on this static mesh for your door so door and then we'll double click on that static mesh from here we need to come on the right hand side in the details and where it says uh, collision complexity change that from use comp from project default to use complex collision as simple then where it says convex down here just press apply and you're gonna see the collisions pop up on the door Press save, and now you shouldn't be able to walk through that door. Let's test that out, and then that'll be it for the video. Hopefully that solved what you guys were looking for. We made this door do all kinds of things. We got locked door. You can't walk through this door. You open it, boom. It's going to close. Um, get the key here. You come to the locked door. You open it. It's going to open. So there you go. That's how you do it. Hopefully you learned a lot during this video because we went over a lot pretty fast. Um, and if you did, cool. If you didn't, just keep watching the video over and over until you get it. But thanks for joining me in this one. I'll holla at y'all in the next one. Peace.